What size do I need? How many pads? What fabrics do I want? Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Marie and I am the owner and creator here at Soft Talker Reusables. In this video, we're gonna go over a complete beginner guide to cloth pads. I know when I first started with cloth pads, I was pretty overwhelmed. There's a lot of choices. What size do I need? What fabrics do I want? That sort of thing. So we're gonna go over all of that in this video so that hopefully by the end of it, you kind of know how to get started and where to go. So the first thing we're going to go over is sizing. Sizing is one of the most frequently asked questions that we get. People have no idea where to start or what size to grab. Probably the easiest way to go about it is to take your disposable pad, your preferred disposable pad, grab a ruler, a tape measure, whatever, something to measure it and see how long that pad is. And then choose a cloth pad that is most similar in length. In our shop, we design all of our sizes of cloth pads to be as comparable in absorbency to a disposable pad of equivalent length. So if you measure your disposable pad and you find it is 12 inches long, you're going to want to go with the 12 inch long pad in our Shop. Now I do also want to say that this is just a starting point. I don't usually recommend going and grabbing a whole stash of pads that are that size that is most similar to your disposable because you may find that you wind up liking a different size in cloth than you do in disposables. They do kind of perform a little bit differently, usually a little bit better, which can slightly change your preferences. So I always suggest just grabbing a couple of pads, trying them out, see how you like them and go from there. And also don't stress if you don't manage to grab the perfect size right from the get-go because most people's periods aren't all one flow type for the entire time. Usually we have light flow days, we have heavy flow days. So if you happen to grab a cloth pad and you find that, oh, maybe it's a little bit too short for your average day, you'll likely still be able to use it on a lighter flow day. And likewise, if you got one too long, you can wear it on a heavier flow day or overnight, that sort of thing. So most sizes will have a use somewhere in your period. And most people tend to find they like to have a variety of sizes on hand just for those different days so that you don't always have to use one size of cloth pad the entire time. You can have a lot of different options. Now, one of the other most frequently asked questions that we get is how many pads to get. The answer to this is super Super variable because every period, everybody's period is very different. Some people have a seven day super heavy period they need to change super often, whereas others will have a three day period that they can get away with one to two pads a day. So obviously in these two circumstances, you would need vastly different amounts of cloth pads. Also certain factors like how often do you want to change? Some people will change, some people like myself will change every single time I go to the washroom, even though my pad isn't totally full. I like to change every time I like to have something fresh because I can. So are you like that? Are you okay with continuing to wear it? And then also things like how often do you want to be washed? washing your pads. Are you okay with having to wash your pads every single day at the end of your cycle so that you don't need very many pads? Are you okay with maybe washing mid-cycle or do you want to have enough cloth pads to last your entire period and wash them all together at the end? So these are factors that can really affect how many cloth pads you need, which is why I don't recommend grabbing a whole bunch all at once. I recommend slowly building your collection. This will make sure you have a set of cloth pads that are perfectly curated towards your needs and you will just eventually reach a point where you, you realize that, oh, hey, I have enough cloth pads. This will last my entire cycle and I don't need to buy anymore. If you want me to just give you a number so that it's easy for you to give get a, like a budgetary expectation, anywhere from like three to five pads a day plus a night pad per day of your period. Some people will use a lot less than that, some people will use a lot more, but that's just kind of like a middle ground guideline. So now you've gotten some cloth pads and you're ready to start using them, how do you go about that? Basically it's very similar to a disposable pad. You put it on, you use it, when it's time to change, rather than putting it in the trash, you just put it into a wet bag or some sort of storage system until you're ready to wash. How often you're going to need to change, again, kind of comes down to what your period is like, but a really good guide is roughly as frequently as you do with a disposable pad. So if you find you need to change your disposable pad every two hours, you'll probably need to change your cloth pad at a similar frequency. Or every eight hours, cloth pad roughly every eight hours as well. Now where to store the soiled pads when you are done using them? You can get things called a wet bag. It's just a washable bag made out of a waterproof fab, waterproof breathable fabric. You can put your soiled pads in there. You can put them into a bucket, a laundry basket, any sort of collection device to hold the pads will do. The biggest piece of advice I can give here is to make sure that storage device has some sort of airflow to it. So using something like a wet bag made out of a fabric called PUL is breathable. It will allow those pads to dry out and that is really key in preventing bacterial growth and eventually odor. So you can just store, change your pads, store it in whatever storage solution, solution you have chosen, continue doing that until you need to wash either because you're running out of pads or because at the end of your cycle and then we can go into washing. Now you're ready to wash your pads. How do you do that? In this video I'm only going to go over kind of a quick summary. Um, I will do a more detailed video down the road with um, more examples and a better explanation of how to wash but the basic kind of rule of thumb for washing cloth pads is to do a rinse, a wash, a dry. The rinse is just to get out the bulk of the blood. The wash is then to now 
clean the pad, make sure it's good and clean. The dry is, of course, to make sure they're good and dry. There's a lot of different ways that you can rinse your pad. You can either rinse them under the sink as soon as you have taken it off. You can use your washing machine to do the rinse at the end of your cycle or when you're ready to wash, just do a quick wash first to get the bulk of the blood out. Some people will chuck them in their shower and while they're showering, they just kind of stomp on the pads to rinse out the bulk of the blood. Whatever works for you, just some sort of rinse to get out the bulk of the blood before you do your wash. Now that the bulk of the blood is out, it's basically just like any other dirty laundry. You can wash it with other clothes, towels, whatever other laundry you have. I do suggest this, especially if you are machine washing. Most machines function better at between two thirds to three quarters full. So you do kind of want there to be some bulk in there. It helps everything agitate against itself and get good and clean. And then use whatever detergent you are already using on your underwear. You don't want to be adding new stuff. You don't need to be adding new things to your system. Whatever you are already using and you know works for you, doesn't irritate your body or irritate your skin, keep using that. And then once they're all washed, you can just dry them. You can either air dry them or machine dry. Our pads are um, dryer safe. I prefer to just chuck them in the dryer. I do want to note though, you want to make sure they are totally dry before you're storing them because the pads do have absorbent layers on the inside and all of that. And some of them are meant to feel stay dry on the outside. Sometimes they can feel dry on the outside while we'll still be a little bit damp on the inside. So you do want to really make sure they are totally dry. So you do want to make sure they are good and totally dry. And then after you've used them, they just need to be stored for your next cycle. Now, a little note on storing your pads between cycles. You can store them in all kinds of different um, bins and whatever. There's a ton of different ways to store your pads. Drop a comment how you store yours so that other people can kind of get some ideas. But um, what I recommend is just making sure they are stored in such a way that there is access to airflow so that if there is, does happen to be a little bit of moisture left in those pads and they weren't 100% completely dry, it can still evaporate. You don't want them sealed inside of like a plastic bin where there is no airflow because you will have potential for mold to grow in there if they aren't totally dry. Just make sure there's some sort of airflow. I personally just store my pads inside of a wicker basket and that does the trick. Now here's kind of a few extra things that people tend to ask about that I do want to touch on. A lot of people come to me saying they're really afraid that they'll leak through their cloth pads and I get it. Um, it is just fabric and I can understand being hesitant, not understanding how it's not going to leak. We do put a waterproof fabric on the bottom of our pads so it isn't likely to leak through but I do understand the hesitation. What I suggest there is to just start at home. Start on a day that you are at home, wear, you know, whatever black sweatpants you have, comfy clothes, anything that you're not going to be super stressed about if you do happen to leak through, and just do that until you start to feel more confident. Eventually you'll find, you know, the cloth pad size that is perfect for you in your heavy day. You'll slowly build confidence because you're not leaking, and just go from there. It does not have to be all at once. You do not need to to um, be 100% cloth pads, you can ask, absolutely do a mix of cloth and disposable. Just go slowly and move at a rate that you feel comfortable. So the last thing I kind of want to touch on is topper fabric. We do offer a pretty wide range of topper fabrics in our shop that all have different pros and cons. So I do get a lot of questions asking kind of what's the best to start with. I'm not going to go too far into depth because um, that's kind of a whole nother video. If you'd like to me to go into depth with all of the different pros and cons of the different fabric types, drop me a comment and I can work on that in the future. I want to say as a beginner, don't stress too much about topper fabric. We do choose fabrics that are going to function well for most people. All of them are going to work well for most scenarios. It's only those that have maybe an extremely heavy gushy flow. If that is you, then you might want to stick to something like the cotton velour option that we have in the shop. Or if maybe you're somebody who has a polyester sensitivity, you wouldn't want to use our polyester fabric. So our PK and our Minky, you'd want to stick with the more natural fibers, that sort of thing. But outside of that, most of the topper fabrics are going to work for most people. Choose a pad that has a print or a color that you love so that you can feel excited about it and want to use it. That is what I recommend doing. Don't stress about the topper fabric. That's something you, that you can get into after you have started and started to feel comfortable with your cloth pads. Now, the biggest thing I want you to take away from this video is try not to stress too hard about the specifics of getting started with cloth pads. Order a size that you think will fit you best. It doesn't necessarily need to be your perfect one. It'll probably still fit somewhere in your period. Don't stress too much about the topper fabrics. Go slowly. I know that the initial cost of starting with cloth pads can be a little high, so it helps with budget if you only grab a few at a time. So go slowly at a pace that you feel comfortable. I know that the hardest part with cloth pads can be just taking that plunge and getting started. Once you do, everything will, will become a lot easier and you'll feel a lot more comfortable moving forward, knowing what pads to buy, that sort of thing. And it does not need to be all or nothing. You do not need to use all cloth pads right from the get-go. It's totally okay to use a mix of cloth and disposables for a while or even forever if that's what works for you. If you only find that maybe using cloth at home works for you out, out of the house doesn't, that's okay. Every cloth pad that you use is one less disposable that's going to sit in a landfill for six to eight hundred years. 
it's your period, do what you're most comfortable with and what works best for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you're someone that uses cloth pads, I'd love if you'd leave a comment on the size of cloth pads that you like to use in your during your period and how many you have. That way other people can kind of see what, what um, others in the community are using and get go from there and maybe it will help them decide what they might need to use as well. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.